Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> well, thank you all for uh, joining us here today uh, to discuss an effort that not only holds enormous impact to our community, but the rest of the city. And I want to thank you, Mayor de Blasio, for <coughs> coming to Chinatown to hear from our community leader. Um, and we will be joined by our elective, wow, Congresswoman Nidhi there Velasquez, we welcome. Excellent. Welcome, welcome. I know you'll see her a little bit later. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I wasn't, I thought you weren't going to be able to join us in person, yeah. but welcome. Yeah. We know that criminal justice reform is an undertaking that require all our communities to be active participants. You know, as someone who has known firsthand the unique role that Chinatown has played since 1980s when the neighborhood fought to be part of a process regarding the expansion of the detention center. One thing is clear, we must not downplay the importance of community engagement. And that is why I'm so thankful that the mayor is here today so that we can begin a productive dialogue about concerns, needs, and most importantly, solutions. And thank you to City Hall, to all the staff for organizing this meeting. Oh, our borough president's here. Gail, welcome. And I want to especially thank the American Legion, Lieutenant Kim Lau's Post 1291 for hosting this event. In some way, I, our condolences goes out to the family uh, and the friends of Chairman Peter Wu, who passed away unex unexpectedly on Saturday. We just spoke to him on Friday. He was supposed to join us here today. Mm. You know, he, is, he was a World War II veteran, one of the very few that's left, and the most senior leader of this post-1291. And I remember him fondly, that he's always smiling, cheerful. He's over 100 years old. Wow. Wow. So that's something about serving this country. He is such a delight, and I will truly, truly miss him. And last week, the House of Representatives unanimously passed the Chinese American World War II Veteran Congressional Gold Medal Act. And the bill right now is waiting for the president to sign. Chairman Wu will be deeply missed by all of us. And I think when this legislation is signed by the president, it will be a great way to honor Chairman Peter Wu. Um, oh, we also have been joined by our state senator, uh, Brian Kavanaugh. So now I will turn it over to our mayor. Uh, some remarks. Thank you. Thank you so much, council member. Thank you, everyone for being here. Uh, I'm looking forward to this opportunity to hear from you. Uh, I want to say at the outset a profound thanks for everything that you do uh, for this city, for this broader community, for this neighborhood. Um, we are blessed to be in a city where people get involved and make a difference and create organizations and sort of unprecedented numbers and levels to make people's lives better. So I want to start by saying thank you, and, and I value uh, the fact that you're taking your time here today to offer thoughts on what we're trying to achieve and how to do it best, and I appreciate that. I want to uh, join Margaret in commemorating the extraordinary service of Peter Wu, and again, a World War II vet, and what he did in service to this country, what he's done in service to this neighborhood. And I'd just like us to, at the outset, just have a quick moment of silence for Mr. Wu. Thank you very much. And I want to, of course, thank uh, the good leadership of uh, this post for welcoming us and for all you do for the community. Thank you very, very much. Um, as we uh, start in this dialogue, I just want to let you know some of the colleagues uh, from the administration who are here. Uh, right next to me, Liz Glazer, my director for the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice. I'm not going to do them in order because I'm looking at the list. Uh, Council, excuse me, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Marco Carrion. Uh, Community Affairs Commissioner, Commissioner for Corrections, Cynthia Brand, Chief of Staff to Deputy Mayor for Operations, Aloysia Heredia, 
and a deputy director uh, for the mayor's office of criminal justice, Dana Kaplan. All of them have been deeply involved uh, on the issue of how we reduce mass incarceration, get off Rikers once and for all, and work with communities on the plans going forward. Also want to, of course, thank the Congress member, Borough President, State Senator, uh, for all they are doing uh, to serve the community. And we're in dialogue on numerous issues all the time. Saw both of you yesterday, talked to you just a few days ago. We're always talking, and, and I appreciate what they do, and, and the, there's always an open line of communication. So I will be very quick, but I want to put this in context. We all together have done a lot to make this city more just and more safe. Uh, the last five years with a neighborhood policing philosophy has required deep engagement with communities. Communities have stepped up and engaged with the police. That has made us the safest big city in America. We've obviously together made a series of reforms. And the people of this city wanted reform. They wanted to see, for example, uh, the end to the broken and unconstitutional use of stop and frisk. The people of this city unquestionably want the era of mass incarceration to end. Uh, I have said uh, over the last couple of years, mass incarceration did not begin in New York City, but it will end in New York City. We will be an example to this whole country. So that's what brings us here, uh, the recognition that we have to leave that uh, reality behind. It was poisonous to our society to see so many people, uh, and primarily, of course, young people, uh, put in jail in a way that only held them back when what we have to do is consistently work to avoid anyone going to jail doesn't need to. I want to note, and this is powerful to the equation, that in 2017, the NYPD arrested 100,000 fewer people than four years earlier. So there's a number of things we're doing, and all my colleagues are working on to, to reduce the number of people going into jail, reduce the time that they spend there. But we cannot make the reforms we need if we keep uh, a broken place at the center of the system. Rikers Island was not built for rehabilitation. Rikers Island goes back 80 years, and it was built uh, to penalize, not to rehabilitate and redeem. It will not work for the future. And uh, we know the only way forward is to have modern uh, jail facilities focused on rehabilitation and redemption. We know they have to be in the boroughs closer to uh, the families and the people can be part of that rehabilitation process. We know they need to be close to the courthouses. Uh, this is the way forward and we created a schema that uh, I believe is one of fairness. It's based on the recommendations in Judge Lippman's report, who I think is uh, an outstanding reformer and, and really led the way and said, here is a vision for the future that could work for this city. And then I, I want to say that both uh, Council Speaker Mark Viverito and then Council Speaker uh, Johnson believe strongly in this vision and encouraged the administration uh, to move forward. And we found a lot of unity on this. So that's what brings us here today. Uh, this is part of a vision of getting off Rikers, having four uh, community-based jails of similar size. We know they must be safe for the surrounding communities, and we have a track record that shows us that that can be done very well. We know there must be a lot of uh, other positive changes in the process to support the community. There's any number of issues, uh, any number of community concerns that we want to address simultaneously as we take this action. That is a matter of fairness, too. Uh, every community in New York City does things that help all of New York City. Every community geographically it takes on elements that we need for everyone. But we also recognize that it's important to give back in that process and to help the community in a variety of ways, to help community organizations, uh, to address longstanding community needs, to have real, tangible, and verifiable community benefits. And we certainly want to speak about that today because that's crucial to the equation. Um, stating the obvious and then uh, looking forward to uh, the dialogue. The locations where we have existing jails since the Lippman report have always been the logical place to focus the discussion. 
But that does not mean, again, that we see it statically. We have to see the overall needs of the community, uh, and we have to address them positively and creatively. And I think any and all issues should be put on the table, both concerns about things that have to be addressed, but also needs of the community that have to be met in the process. Uh, and that's what we intend to do today and in meetings ahead, uh, and certainly uh, through a Euler process that will involve very, very extensive community involvement. So I want to thank you, uh, council member. Uh, we've worked together on many things, uh, and I know you will tenaciously stand up for the community, uh, and we will continue this dialogue, but I want to thank you for uh, this opportunity to speak directly uh, to leaders of the community and to hear from them. Over to you. Okay. Well, we're going to start the, um, the discussion, and I know that a lot of the community leaders here have questions. And so, Mayor, we're not, when people ask a question, they will identify themselves so that we save a little time because I know you, you don't have... Um, yeah, I've, I've got, just for everyone's knowledge, about an hour, and uh, the meeting I have with Secretary HUD Secretary Carson was scheduled based on his schedule, uh, and that's going to be at 12 noon at uh, 26 Federal Plaza. So, so long as I can get there on time, and the council and the Congress member too, so. People, if they have comments or questions, please raise your hands, and, and then I'll call on you, and then you can um, identify yourself.